Hey YouTube, back again. Um, wanted to show you a little bit of progress I'm doing. This is a little bit of a complicated part of this build. So I'm going to show you this real quick. Basically I have one side completely welded together. It's not finished welded but everything's tacked up. Um, the way I'm tacking this is I'm tacking on each corner all the way around. The reason why I'm not welding these off is because this is thin wall tubing, it's 16 gauge, plus with it just being three quarter square, it will warp and it will warp fast. Um, I'm going to build the entire bench and then come back and finish weld everything. Um, so this way if any warping happens, hopefully it'll be a minimum and, and everything will be squared up and, and, and together at that point so I won't really have to worry too much about it. So anyway. Um, the entire side, side panel, here's the other side panel, and this right here is the base of the shelf, okay? Uh, the reason why that's built is because it is essentially a cross brace that's going to attach to this bar right here and to that bar on the other one. Um, basically what I'm doing right now is I'm attaching the sides together, okay? My table is a 4 by 6 welding table, not, not the workbench I'm building, but my welding table is 4 by 6. My workbench that I'm building is 8 feet wide. Okay, so I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to have to be ready to deal with the piece that I'm working on being too big for my welding table, which means it's going to have, it's going to be hanging over. So, that's why I got this little setup going on. Um, if you look at my drawings, here. I know they're crude and a little bit hard to understand. This area right here is your top view of the, the, the workbench surface. That's the way the tubing is going to be. Okay, I'm putting this cross brace in right now. Okay, this would be your side panel. Side panel. I'm welding in that cross brace. I need to lift it up three quarters of an inch to make room for this this brace and this brace which is this is the back view which would be this and this so again I'm welding this cross brace on the back view this is the top view of this work surface which is this brace here so I'm spacing it off with these pieces of three quarter inch tubing these are actually the back braces that go here, I'm just using them for spacers at the moment. That's why they're so close to the edge. Okay, um, closer to the edge the better because the tubing could have a little bit of a bend in it or just sag. So I need to make sure it's, it's spot on. As close as possible anyway. So I'm moving this over here, clamping it down. And now I'm, I'm ready to tack this up here. But I made sure I have one on the other side as well. So once that's tacked together, what I'm going to do um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another one of these pieces, these are the cross braces, and I'm going to tack here for that piece, okay? Um, how I'm squaring them up obviously is a little bit strange because it's not like, like this is where they're just butted together and I can put my speed square between it like this. Okay, I'm not able to do that because they're offset on these um, speed squares for, that you would use for like carpentry or something like that because they have that lip on there what I'm able to do is rest it on this cross brace here and slide it across you see that so now it's touching this that I'm welding and it's touching that because of the lip on the speed square so if you don't have one of these get one you know they come in handy Matter of fact, they don't come in handy. You need one. So um, that's how I'm squaring that up. And then once it's squared up, I'm just clamping it down again like that and making sure that my side panel is clamped down properly. And I'm just going to go ahead and tack this together. Um, I'm going to edit in all the, the, the frame build videos into one part so I'll see you in a second. Okay so I got this all clamped down and ready for the <clears throat> the second brace to be put in here. Um, just wanted to give you guys a quick look at, at how I did that. 
this clamps clamped to the table, the edge of the table, and the three, the two pieces. This is just clamping that to that to hold hold it a little bit better. Um, I do have this clamp over here to try to take some of the flex out of this. Um, otherwise, this could sag down in this corner without that clamp. And got a clamp here and a clamp there, just like I did here. Only difference is I have the, that bar coming through here and then I have it clamped with the, the vice grip clamp here. And I've got this clamp here to help keep any kind of sagging out of this area. So and again I squared it up the same way as I said before. The speed square. Sitting on just like that. You know it could be the tiniest little bit off. I don't think it is but even if it is I mean, these aren't these aren't going to be precision corners or anything. Um, as long as you get it as close as you possibly can, because this metal, this material is is flexible because it's such small tubing. By the time I get to this other side, if, if there's any kind of difference whatsoever, it'll be something that I can just pull it into place and and it should be fine. So. Just wanted to show you that quick setup. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so got some progress here. Um, basically, I mean, you could you're starting to see the the actual shape of it. You know, it's laying on the back. The shelf's welded in. When you weld this shelf in, it's a little bit tricky because um, you're trying to clamp it down to this, and you'll be tempted to just clamp it down here and weld it. Make sure it's square up and down. Okay. Uh, make sure your everything lines up properly. And again, just tack weld. And I'm going to reiterate that as much as possible. Double, triple, quadruple. Check your measurements and your your squared corners and whatnot. Um, here's an example. I'm going to have to cut these tacks out of this because something something's wrong. Um, the gap from here to here is off. I don't know how it's off because this is square, but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to knock those tacks loose and I'm getting ready to, to put on this side and then want, I'll, I'll remeasure everything and clamp everything back down and, and get ready to, to tack it all back up. Um, I haven't tacked this end here or this because of the same, because of this problem here. Um, this needs to be lined up properly otherwise if I tack these down and there's an arch in this that goes this way it's going to pose a problem because I'm going to pull this down and then it's going to end up pushing this out or that out and it's going to start throwing it all off so I'm going to cut those those tacks off and then like I said put this side on here and clamp it all into place and, and get it ready to, to finish this thing up um, once that side panel's on, the entire back will be ready to go. Um, everything will be tacked, granted, but it'll be ready to ready to go. I could stand this thing up and get it off the welding table if I wanted to. The only thing I'll have left at that point is to run my bar from here to the opposite corner. It'll be one long piece. Um, then there'll be the, the vertical support that'll go from that bar down here to this joint and the same thing down here to that joint. That's another reason why this is crucial that this is in the exact spot. Otherwise my tabletop surface is gonna be all warped and jacked up. Um, then I have the point that'll come from here and this is just gonna be kind of a, a 90 degree L that'll drop down to here. Um, then I'll have a piece that goes from the corner straight across to the other piece. So basically you're going to have a, a boxed in area here so that I can, it'll be cabinet basically. And I'll put a couple of doors or one door, I'm not sure. That's, that's later down the road as far as access to this little cabinet and there'll be one on this side. And like I said in the previous video, the center section is going to be open for leg room from sitting here working on it. And I did decide that the pegboard is going to be centered. It just makes more sense because I can weld it in four points. I could weld it here, here, and at the top. 
there and then build whatever kind of hangers I need to off to the side for the, the poly bins to hang. The Harbor Freight ones for those that are new to this. Um, links will be all down in the description for those that are interested. So let me stop this real quick. I'll, I'll edit in the, the final part of when, once I have this side section together. And actually that won't be the final part. but. I, I'm going to put that side section on and then I'm going to start building the, the box and erase for the cabinet parts and, and I'll, I'll edit that in. Talk to you in a second. Okay, um, got it standing on its own. Got the whole back put together, sides put together. I'm getting ready to put this long crossbar in here right now. Um, you see what I'm using is a, a tie down strap for a clamp. Um, it'd be real nice if you had two hands for this, but you can do it without it. Make sure the thing is squared up. Make sure it's not twisting on you um, before you tack it. And that's pretty much it. Um, at that point, you'll just build the bases for the, the cabinets and, and put in your crossbars here. And here, there'll be a crossbar at the bottom doing the same thing and then a vertical support. And then, and then over this way. Um, and then the framing will be done on this. I may, I may, depending on how solid this feels, I may drop two legs down straight from the center. Um, it, that's just going to all be based on how, how sturdy it feels once everything else is framed out. But you can see it here. Um, it's pretty good. I am going to, at some point, do some sort of gusset or angled support up here. I haven't figured out what I want to do just yet. Um, so for the time being, it's going to stay just like that. Um, part of the reason is, is I don't think I'm going to have the material to put the actual shelf floor onto that. Um, I know I'll have the material for the tabletop and have the material for the cabinet floor for sure and whatever I have left over from there I'll figure out where I want to use it um, so right now I'm going to I'm going to tack this piece in and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to work on trying to pull the dents out of this and then get that centered in here and welded into that to the backsplash area and then I'm going to start working on the poly bin hangers. Um, once all that stuff is done on the back, the backsplash wall, whatever you want to describe that as, then then I'll work on boxing in this lower section and, and go from there. Um, I don't know. I might change my mind, but I'm definitely going to put the the pegboard on here after I get this piece in, um, just because I want to see how it looks and and come up with a plan for the the plastic storage bin hangers. So, talk to you in a few, or in a second. Okay, um, got a bunch of progress done. Got the pegboard peg board mounted. Um, basically, I just threw a couple welds there. Um, because, of the, because of the way I welded this bar to this bar, um, there ended up being a gap here because the weld's behind it um, when I should have put the weld right here but because I was laying this out on the table this would have been the bottom side so I couldn't really do that so um, leans a little bit further out that direction but we're talking about I don't know 16th of an inch or so maybe an eighth not that big of a deal so I put the weld bead there um, same on the other side and same exact thing, weld down at the bottom on the other side. Um, got two welds here. I didn't put two on this side, but I will go back in there and do it. I just couldn't reach with my welder in the position that I had it. So, um, one thing that I do want to mention. I put the pegboard on because I really wanted to see this thing start looking like it's supposed to. Um, wanted to know how much room I was going to have between the the poly bins and, and basically I'm going to be able to put four sideways you know in a row and five high 
And, and I could probably get a lot more than five high, but I need to have room to get inside of these. If you, if you watch my other videos, um, I got big monkey hands and I, I need to be able to get inside of these things so I can't have them just like directly on top of each other. I need to have some space like that. So that's the plan. There's going to be 20 on this side, 20 on that side. What I'm going to do is I've got some one inch by eighth inch flat bar that I got with this steel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that and weld it to the face of this tube and to the back of the pegboard. And I'll do five rows of that. Okay. And then with what I have left, you know, part of this is going to be me cutting out some strips that are at least as tall as these are. And then those will be welded to the one inch flat bar. And the reason I'm doing that is because these will hang on it like this. And the one inch flat bar would allow it to tilt forward and just kind of twist it. So you need something that's as it's going to sit on the whole face of this. So that's why I'm going to weld that the 316 plate to it. Um, I might try something else, but uh, that's, I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm going to go. Um, if I change it, I'll let you know. You're obviously going to see it because I'm building it. But that's the plan for the, the hanging bins, the storage bins. Um, if you look, I've got this crossbar welded in, this crossbar welded in. Um, one thing that I had, I, I knocked out some of the dents, not perfectly, but it's better. Um, but one thing that I was very, very aware of, if you're, if you're building something like this, unless you have a, a unless you got metal pegboard and you're not mounting on the wooden pegboard, um, if you decide to hang your pegboard before you put your, your bench top on here, make sure that you have enough clearance underneath here. This whole frame is designed where it can easily be sheathed, you know, or, or put the material on top without having to notch around corners. So if you see here, I intentionally put this bar right here so that I could just cut two foot by eight foot sheet of 316 plate and I don't have to do any corner notching or anything like that. I just lay it right down on here and it fits perfect. But because this is here, you need to make sure that it's up high enough to get your, you know, your table surface underneath there, which I did. I was well aware of that. This is 316 sheet metal. And as you can see, it goes under there just fine. Plenty of room. All the way through. So. I did, I was aware of that and I did plan for it. So, <clears throat> I was a little concerned that I wouldn't be able to do as many attachment points because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill holes in it or punch, you know, punch holes through it with the plasma cutter, you know, every, every so often. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna spot weld this whole thing onto, onto the surface here. Um, the reason why I want to weld it on there, I got to be real careful with heat, but if I'm just doing spot welds, I should be okay. Um, and I can go back and, and grind the weld smooth, but the reason why I wanted to do the welds versus like, you know, pop riveting it on there is I think that these would be stronger than rivets because rivets eventually with, you know, shaking around, you know, grabbing this thing and doing this number will eventually weaken. Um, if I weld it, you know, welds will eventually weaken too, but I don't, they don't do it as fast, number one. And, and number two, what I think it's going to do, it'll stiffen up the, the frame of this substantially. Right now you see a lot of kind of wobble in it. You know, I still got to put the, the cabinets underneath here. Um, and then also when I do the bracing here for the, the bends, it'll stiffen it up some. And, you know, I've got to brace this top piece 
and I'm gonna do something for like a side panel. Um, I gotta come up with a design and I'm not gonna do that with this video just because I don't have the material that I, that I would need to do that. Um, but I'm gonna do some sort of design for the, the entire side panel and which would also gusset in these legs because you, you know you guys are probably thinking that's some pretty flimsy legs but they'll be they'll be fine because there's going to be some gusseting going on in there with the sheathing that i put over the top of it so um, right now what i wanted to show you is i have the little pyramid whatever you want to call this thing <laughs> corner for the shelving built here and basically this is what I did you know I, I squared it out and welded it and then to make sure that I, everything was square vertical and horizontal what I did was I basically I laid down the bottom section which would be if we're looking at this drawing it would be this and then I unclamped it from the table once it was welded and then flipped it so the way it's sitting right now this is the vertical piece that will go you know this is these are the the horizontal pieces so that vertical piece will attach right here not here but right here and drop straight down and then those other pieces will come the same direction um, the way I have this designed and I, and I talked about this in the other videos is when I put the the cabinet doors on here the face of the door will be flush with the outside part of this bar right here so the way I'm framing this out is this little frame section is actually going to be on the inside of this so the the door is actually going to be three um, three quarter inch square tubing just like this so that frame will sit literally inside of that it's compensating for it so it's hard for me to kind of show you but it's going to sit like that where it's on the inside of it it will line up to this bar here but on the outside it's going to be there the reason why it looks off is because it's up against the pegboard not up against this back piece um, but that's how it's going to go it's going to go right underneath here i wish i could show you better but You'll just have to see what I welded on there. Um, so this piece, I've got to put a couple more welds right here for this vertical piece, and then I've got to figure out a way to hold those up where I can weld those on, and and then the entire frame will be done, unless I choose to add some some legs to this section. Um, I'll talk about that when I when, once I get these on here. So talk to you guys in a, in a second. Okay, um, last last part, last segment for tonight. Um, I've got the cabinet area framed out. Everything's finished welded, with the exception of a couple of welds that I have to do with the thing upside down, or at least on its side. Um, I don't like welding upside down, so. Got to do a little bit of grinding, not too much. I tried to avoid that as much as possible. Um, it's just a couple of spots here and the four welds here and here. Yeah, that's that's it. Pretty much that same thing on the other side as well. A um, little bit on the inside here just because there's going to be a piece of a sheet metal that flat sits flat up against here. Piece of sheet metal is going to sit flat up against here as well. So that's why I, gotta, that's why I have to grind those smooth. Um, but outside of that, there's not a lot of grinding that's going to need to be done. And I tried to avoid that by all means necessary in the design and where I knew I was going to put the welds at. But um, there's going to be one change in the actual design. If I made these cabinets the cabinet doors just one door on each side that would be a pretty serious door um, so what I'm going to do and, and it's going to help with support here in the front with weight um, I'm going to cut a couple pieces of the three-quarter inch tube and I'm going to lay them 
on the face side of this one here that says D and bring it all the way down so it's a leg. Same thing on this one. Okay, so what that's going to do, if you look from here, or if you look here, you see how this leg sticks out from the frame of the, the cabinet? It's going to do that same thing right here. And what that will allow me to do is inset the door frames. So I'll create two door frames, make them, you know, double doors. And when it closes, they'll hit, they'll rest up against the face side of this bar here. Okay, and what I'm going to do for the top side is I'm going to use some of that flat bar that I have and just hang it down like this. You know, this is over exaggerating, but it'll give it a bump, you know, a little little piece of metal to bump into so that it, it stays firm. I'm going to have to look online and see what I can find as far as magnets or latching mechanisms. Um, I'm going to do that now. It's about 3.15 in the morning. So I'm going to call this a wrap. While I'm uploading these videos, I'll look that up and then get ready to finish this thing up tomorrow. Um, I will frame out the doors, but I don't have hinges and I won't have latches. So they're not going to be put on there. Plus I don't have all the sheet metal again like I need to to, to completely finish this. But I'm going to put the countertop on. I'm going to put the bins on. And I'm going to put the, the floor on the, on the cabinets. Um, who knows, maybe, down, maybe after I stare at this thing for a while, I might actually even put a shelf inside of there. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure, kind of going back and forth about putting shelves inside of there. Maybe on one side and not the other. Um, the reason being is that without the shelf in there, it allows me to put, you know, my cases for my bender over here and just other large items and get them off the floor and get them out of the way. Be nice to have them all stored in there. Um, but who knows? We'll, we'll see how it goes. If that change is there, then you'll definitely see it. So, subscribe, comment, like. I hope you guys are enjoying this build. I'm really kind of excited about it. I can't wait to, to get it all finished and get rid of this mess. <laughs> At first, it's probably just going to sit over here on this side. and So I'll have two until I can get around to building the second, second bench. Um, but at least I'll be able to clean up some more of my clutter and, and get some things a little bit more organized. And it's nice to, it's, it's real nice to always build your own tools and build your own shop equipment and stuff like that, especially when you can do it for a fraction of the price that it would cost you to buy, you know, low end products of the same sort. Like I said, I'm going to try to, to bring this in. I've got to, I'm going to calculate my cost right now. Yeah, but I'm going to try to come underneath $200 um, just because of the Lowe's workbench. It's actually half the size of this. It's not nearly as tall, but it's, it's only four feet long. Um, that thing is 200 bucks. So, and I was seriously considering buying it, and I just figured I'd just build my own. So that's my goal is to come under, underneath $200 as far as cost and... And if I can do that, I did a great job as far as I'm concerned. So, again, subscribe, comment, like. Check out the links in the description. First one's Alvarez Metalworks. Go like my Facebook page, please. Um, then I'll have links to the products that I've been using um, as far as Everlast, Power iMig 200, it's the welder. Have, I'll have the link for the poly bins. Um, I'll have the link to the Rust-Oleum hammered finished copper paint that I used for this. And I don't know what else. So yeah, my chop saw that I've been using for this. Just check out the links. You'll see links down there for, for everything that I'm using to, to build this. So, Alright, talk to you guys later.